Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today I'm pretty charged up, no pun intended. Actually, yes, pun intended, because this is the new GMC Hummer EV. And uh, I knew it was large, but now seeing it in person, this thing is massive. And uh, it's got a lot of interesting, cool stuff built in. And so uh, I'm excited to review this one. So we're gonna look at the interior, we're gonna talk through all the practicality, the livability, all the normal stuff. And we're gonna take it for some driving impressions. And of course, I'll always give you my thoughts there. And at the end, should this be something you consider buying or is it kind of just a toy or a gimmick? All that's coming up right now. All right, so here we are inside the interior and you know, just off the cuff, this feels very familiar. Even though the design in here is really futuristic, it's like, it, it just feels like you're in a totally different kind of vehicle. Like it doesn't feel like a Silverado or anything, but yet it does feel connected to that Silverado. And I think that's because, well, to be honest, I at first I thought it was because of the materials and, and I think there's truth to that, but I also think there's something about the smell of the plastics and the adhesives that they all use at the GMC factory because I can tell that this is a GM vehicle just by that. So for whatever it's worth, take that in as a, you know, it's a familiar place if you buy a lot of GM vehicles. You do have leather on the steering wheel, which is I'd say equivalent to like Maybe what BMW is using right now on their G80s, because um, that's exactly what it feels like to me. And that's cool. You've got real buttons throughout this cabin, which I do appreciate. I, you know, I know a lot of people say that, but it's just one of those things where you need a balance between what's in the infotainment and also what's in the cabin, because sometimes you just need quick access to stuff. So the steering wheel has the basic stuff you typically need. You've got menu scrolling capabilities here. Uh, you've also got your, um, your adaptive cruise control on this side, phone, pickup, all that stuff. And not to mention, you do have big, huge buttons here. Now, I don't know why they're this big. I mean, I, you know, that's a funny thing I just said. And I'll tell you why, because this vehicle is so large. If you're gonna have giant buttons, this is kind of the one you would have it in. You have an, info an infotainment screen here, but you also have your main screen here that gives you all the information. And the graphics that are built into these screens is awesome. I think they worked with Epic Engines to like really create these amazing arcade-like graphics. I think that's amazing. Also, you do have drink holders here. There's two here. Um, you do have some spots here in the door cards, which is nice. You have spot to charge your phone, USB, USB-C, uh, wireless charging. I mean, really no excuse not to have a charged phone. Uh, and I like how these things disappear out of way. Here you have nice cubby, lots of storage here. And you also have a cigarette lighter placed right there, which is great. Mode selector switch, your gear switch. Um, you do have a built-in tow controller there, which is nice. I'm really glad that companies are doing that now. Now the seats are interesting because they are pretty wide, but they do have some bolstering around the back area, which is good, and lower lumbar support too. They do go up pretty high, and they do go down pretty low. This is about as low as it gets, and I'm about 6'2", so lots of room here. You know, I think that's good. You do have a Bose 14 speaker system here with a subwoofer, so the sound system in here is really, really good. Uh, I believe it gets out to like 30 megahertz, which is great. 
Also, as part of the storage in this vehicle, you do have the center console, but underneath it, it's totally open. So, I mean, you, you could put something there. I, I don't really know what. I'd be too afraid for it to fall out of there while we're driving into my footwell area and potentially cause an issue. But I guess if it's something big enough, yeah, I mean, that's a great spot for it. All right, let's uh, test out the back. Obviously, you gotta climb in here a little bit, but here I am. All right, yeah, not bad. I mean, lots of leg room, and this seat is basically placed for a really, really tall person to, uh, to sit in the front comfortably, and I am pretty comfortable back here too. Yeah, no issues. And obviously with the door closed and stuff, I mean, you're, you're kind of nicely encapsulated in the vehicle, but lots of room. Actually, it's really nice. Um, I typically am used to having my feet like really scrunched up or like, you know, having to like kind of sit sideways, but no, not here. This is cool. I will say that just this C pillar here is kind of more forward than I would expect. And so it actually, just for my vision sake, it is kind of blocking a little bit, but that's okay. I mean, you know, typically people are looking forward or, you know, kind of looking through the cab, not so much, you know, looking to the right so much, but you know, that is a design decision. And so it is what it is. Also, we do have the climate uh, switches here that are a new zone, which is great because, you know, the front so far away from the back that actually in this vehicle, it makes sense to have auto climate zone in the rear. Some vehicles, the cabin is so tight, it's just kind of more of a gimmick than anything else. But here, I think it actually makes sense. On top of that, you do have your charge ports, traditional charge ports, right, that you would expect. Uh, and also you do have the ability to seat uh, warm yourself in the back. No ventilation though, but you know, better than nothing. All right, so here we are at the back of the Hummer and there are some interesting design elements and design choices that I wanted to kind of point out because they're, they're really good and you should know this if you're thinking about buying this thing. The first is you do have a two inch tow hitch, which is great. Uh, this can tow about 7,500 pounds. I don't think you should tow with an electric vehicle unless you want to see your range totally drop, but in a short distance pinch kind of thing, it's good to have. So moving on. You'll also notice the most obvious thing, you don't have a lift up hatch here, you have a barn door. And that's good for a couple of reasons and also one particular reason. I, I like that it's uh, a barn door in, the, in a way because you could install like a fold down table here for camping, you could have your little cooking area here. And also this lifted panel here kind of matches the height. So you can sort of orchestrate your uh, cooking in a camping situation perfectly. But that's not the only thing. This barn door opens this way because it's also the carrier for that spare tire in the back. Why is that good? Well, it means there's no spare tire underneath, which means you have more ground clearance. So that's better for off-roading. And because it's on the door itself, you have a full-size spare and you don't need to get a carrier or anything to plug into your hitch. So it's kind of a win. I like that. Now, here's the other thing. In the back here, this is pretty high up and I was trying to figure out why. And yeah, you do have some storage under here, which is nice. But here's what's interesting. You have these buttons here. Auto drops the rear seat. The rear seats are almost flat level with this, this back area. So if you drop the seats down, you could probably just, a six foot tall person could sleep back here. Just put a little mattress and now, not only can you go take this at camping, you could sleep in it. You don't even need a tent. So I think that's pretty cool. I would definitely sleep back here. Um, I think that's an awesome win. So one of the great things about this truck in particular is that it actually has air suspension in all four corners, which is not a new concept for electric vehicles, but with the different drive modes, it actually allows for you to adjust the ride height for those particular modes. So if you're going off-roading, for example, you can actually adjust the ride height from about 10.1 inches to about 16.1, which is a lot, that's a lot of ground clearance. Now, what's beautiful about that is that it allow you to get over difficult obstacles, but you can't actually drive at a higher speed at that height because, well, pretty much the suspension's maxed out and uh, the, quite frankly, the ride would be really, really harsh. And you'd probably damage the shock. But the fact of the matter is that's built in and it's a nice to have, you're not gonna get stuck on this thing anywhere. So I hope you guys can see this on camera. Uh, I wanted to point out the color choice of this vehicle because here in the sunlight, 
it is green, but it's green metallic. And what's interesting is the metal flakes in the paint are actually kind of a blend of gold and green flakes. And so it gives us really unique cosmic effect, which I think looks really beautiful in the sun, but also it seems to be carried out into the trim and bumpers of the vehicle as well. And so it just looks really, really cool. Not to mention once the sun goes down, this vehicle doesn't actually look black. It looks like a matte green, which I think is pretty unique. And this color is called Deep Aurora Metallic, uh, which is a $625 charge, which is kind of a no brainer. When you think about what companies charge for paint to sample on anything these days, for under $1,000, it's kind of a no-brainer to look for a special color, and this is absolutely special. So, definitely love the color. So, one of the options that this vehicle came with is actually called Infinity Roof with Transparent Sky Panels. What is that exactly? Well, it's uh, these uh, little plastic, I think they're plastic, uh, panels here, and not only do they come out, but the center brace here also can be removed. It needs a ratchet, but um, that can be pulled out as well and giving you like sort of a Targa-like experience. And the cool thing is, it's not just the front that gets that, it's also the back. And so because of that, I don't know, it really adds this fun factor to this vehicle. It's kind of like a beach buggy or, uh, I don't know, like a desert roamer or something. I think it's just kind of cool. Um, now, what's neat is that, you know, you can take these and store them in the frunk, which is great. That's kind of what it's there for, to be honest, because it's got a lot of room over there. But once you put these panels in there, <laughs> the room is gone. So kind of just plan for that if you have a lot of stuff. But I think if you're going to buy this, you got to check that box because it's only $1,495. For that amount of money and considering how much fun and <laughs> interesting appeal it, it draws to the vehicle, it's kind of a no-brainer. All right, so for anybody who actually off-roads here, I probably caught this thing right here, which at first kind of looks like it's a rugged, tough slider. And what is the difference between a slider and what this is? This is a running board. The difference is a slider would connect underneath to the frame of the car to help actually protect the cab of the vehicle in sticky situations, like when you're going around tight uh, trail corners and there's boulders and rocks coming up or you're going over and landing on, the slider would protect the bottom of the cab from getting damaged, dented, whatever. But a running board, unfortunately, connects to the cab itself, which is actually a weak point. So, though this is nice for climbing in and out of the vehicle and helping you do that, it's not gonna protect the vehicle in those off-road situations. And uh, here's the thing, is that because this is electric, underneath it's all battery. And actually this is, I would say the batteries are like that, that thick on the bottom. So there really isn't anywhere for a slider to attach. So even in the, in the aftermarket, I don't think you'd get a slider for this vehicle. But that being said, credit where credit's due. I mean, this is a pretty nice running board. It, it's made out of steel. It's got this uh, bed liner type material on top, which is really, really nice and uh, durable. And it actually looks pretty tough. So. You know, maybe it's not an issue. I mean, especially because you can raise the height of this. So maybe that gets you through most obstacles. But if you're a real off-roader and you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna get that and like replace and put sliders on, just know, I don't think you can. And uh, hopefully the aftermarket can figure that out. But for now, this is what you get. So here we are driving the Hummer EV and uh, not totally what I expected, to be honest. I kind of expected something that's gonna be kind of difficult and cumbersome and kind of annoying to drive, but maybe enjoyable in the sense that it's a once in a while treat, right? But this thing is actually pretty daily drivable. And you know, I'm um, pleasantly surprised by that. I didn't expect it to be as friendly and really as usable as a daily driver as it really is. But of course there are some drawbacks, um, the biggest of which is no matter how acclimated you'll become to it driving around, no matter how much you want to make this your one and only car, it's still very, very large. And man, as a large car, it, you know, it doesn't fit everywhere very nice. But when you get on the free one, you step on it. Oh, 
I know that no matter what, this is an EV and it will move very quickly, but when you feel how much weight you're pushing at all times, and at the same time, the size of this thing, it's really impressive how it moves. So yes, getting on the freeway with a thousand horsepower under your right foot is a great feeling, no doubt. But it isn't everything, and really, there's almost no opportunity to really enjoy the thrust factor of an EV. I mean, not in the real world. Now, how does this thing actually drive? How does it feel to drive this thing? Well, you know, look, this cabin is really spacious. We talked about that. But that spatial awareness that it gives the driver is sort of interesting because I do feel like the passenger's way over there. And it also makes me remember that so are the wheels. The wheels are really pushed out to the corners of this truck. And, you know, with the four-wheel steering, it's incredible because it, it does provide a nice basis for a good handling vehicle and, more importantly than that, an agile vehicle. So just going through a corner, you, you, you can sense this thing is, is not trying hard to go around a turn and it really defies the logic of its size when you look at how easily it goes through a turn. Now, it's not great handling, but the only thing that I think really holds it back from being great handling are two things. One, these air shocks are really the main thing. They're not designed to be like, you know, a sport suspension or anything, uh, but they do an okay job considering the weight. And then two, the tires, because, I mean, these tires are supposed to be a little bit more knobby and a little bit more like off-roady kind of in your face beefy tires but it's really good at like diving into a corner because the steering is designed well enough where you can't really you can't really build a truck like this and expect it to have a lot of understeer or any understeer because it would just be too hard to recover i mean the weight would just take over so you have to make a good grippy front end for this thing to be viable. And I think they've done a good job of that. And you know, I'm not surprised. GM is filled with really, really great chassis engineers. And I think they've been at work on this one too. Braking is excellent as you might imagine because well, it's got good brakes and because it is one pedal driving and so this thing almost doesn't need a brake pedal um so yeah braking is good so that concludes our test drive and review of the hummer ev and uh gosh man what, what can i say about this thing let's start off with performance stupid fast it's electric thousand horsepower do i need to talk about it anymore probably not Okay, moving on. Uh, doesn't handle very well. We got that, right? Um, but what is it really good at? Well, the thing is, this thing put a smile on my face pretty much the whole time I was driving it. It's just, it's just built for like having fun and being entertaining and giving you kind of like this feeling like you, I hate to say this, but like you own the road. I mean, you, that's how you feel like. I, I feel so giant in this thing. There was times when I pulled up next to pretty big, you know, F-250s and stuff, and they kind of looked small in comparison to me. Um, I don't know why that's empowering, but it kind of felt that way. And that's not usually how I think about cars, but it was just an interesting feeling. I feel like this is sort of a metaphor for America as a whole because, well, it's designed for entertainment. It's designed for fun. It's designed to be a sort of not the most efficient thing and it doesn't care to be and if you don't believe me check out the easter egg over here this is the american flag built right into the vehicle so you know they're not just hinting they're screaming it at you this is for america this represents america and uh, ultimately they're not apologetic about it and honestly you shouldn't feel like it's a bad thing it's it's a ton of fun and i've enjoyed my time with this vehicle now I have noticed that I got a lot of looks in this thing over the last few days to a week. 
Uh, not all those looks are positive, by the way. I think that people are still unsure about a vehicle like this. Even though it's electric, it's not guilt-free electric, right? We all know that electric vehicles take more pollution in many cases than a, than a gas-powered equivalent. So, uh, considering this has a giant battery, probably the biggest battery, I think, uh, being manufactured today, maybe outside of the Cybertruck, it's kind of obvious that this is not um, something good for the environment in the long run, especially because we don't even know how we're going to recycle or what we're going to do with these batteries when we're done with them. We'll figure that out, I guess, as we go. But this is a for fun car. And I put this in the same category as I would say an exotic sports car because, well, think about it. Both of them are stupid fast, right? Both of them have you know, really not that much practicality built into them, which is kind of true here. And also, they're both expensive and, you know, kind of not your only car. I mean, most people do not buy this as their only one and only car. They have two or three other cars or vehicles to get around. And this is like the, hey, let's take the top off because you obviously can take these roof panels out. And, um, let's go hit up the beach and or whatever right and that's cool that's that's what makes america great right really that's what it is it's the fact that we love something built just for us just for entertainment's sake just for something that's enough for us to indulge and enjoy life with that's the beauty of america and i think that's totally embodied in this all that being said what do i recommend i think if you're going to spend this kind of money and you've got your heart set on looking at an EV, it's something you should check out. Uh, but keep in mind, the Cybertruck is also in that price range. Uh, not that I recommend you go that way. It's just, this thing is like, it's just a lot of vehicle in every way, shape, and form of that sentence. So come drive it, tell me what you think. But ultimately, I've enjoyed it. I've had fun in this vehicle. And uh, I don't know if I'd buy it, but I've enjoyed it, so <laughs> for whatever that's worth. All right, guys, thanks for watching at this point. I appreciate you all. Please go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.